At this point, we've got the time uh, counting down, but no real interaction just yet. So we want to have points. We get points when we tap the sprites. We've only got one sprite at the moment, so we'll make the basic one work, and then we will add more of them running around and doing stuff. And we'll do things like with, you know, some of them are minus points, some of them are positive points, maybe we've got like random numbers, like this one might be worth between 5 and 15 points, so we can have a variety of things. Uh, similar to our time limit right here, we need to have a little box on screen that displays our points. So in, let's go back to our wave one, and let's create a new layer so that then we can put uh, a little thing that keeps track of, of our points. So new layer, we'll call this wave one points. So a new layer where we're going to put a box to display our wave one points. So if we've got a layer for it, we need to actually then draw the box get a text box and like I said I, I usually draw a box to the size instead of just clicking and adding it because then here I kinda know the size that I want it to be and we'll put points so you can, you can design that up somehow so that you can have your points and your score not bumping into each other, but I'll put it over there. So a brand new text box. Okay, so a layer, the text box, the instance name, then the code. So we need an instance name for this. I'll just call it the same thing as my layer, but with also that extra TXT at the end. So underscore txt. So there's the dynamic box with a basic font. If you do want a fancier font, we'll talk about it later, but you have to embed the font. That, that might be one of the reasons why if you chose a different font and it didn't appear on screen, it, it wasn't embedded into our app. We have these fonts on our computer, but when we actually turn it into an app, they don't transfer automatically unless we embed. So we'll keep it simple at the moment. Wave one points underscore txt is the name of my uh, object, the name of the text box. I'll lock that layer and we'll go back to our actions. So all of this code so far is setting itself up to deal with the time limit and all of that. I'm going to scroll down to the very end and we'll add some new code here. What what you could do, what programmers often do, is they put the different blocks of code about a concept together and then another section for another concept. All that we've written so far has been the concept of the time happening. So you, you can do this if you want, but sometimes programmers do this. They make some sort of marker that looks something very obvious like start timer code. And then all of this here at the end is end timer code. So this is optional. And let me let me just zoom out to show you it. You can't read it obviously, but if I zoom out that far you see here I have this comment that I've made and just some a bunch of dashes start timer code all of this code right here is related to the timer and then it ends right here so then what follows will be code related to my points so even if you can't read it from a distance you see that this is like a chunk of code in a certain topic programmers often do that they group it together they then they they name it let me zoom back in so start timer code there don't forget your comment at the top there and then at the end of the code 
then just marking it as that's the end of my timer code. Because what could follow after that, start points code. Eventually, we have end points code. So everything in between there will be related to points. And the, and the reason for this is as you're browsing your dozens or hundreds of lines of code, you have these markers that you've given yourself to orient yourself. Like a little bit earlier when we might have been lost, where do I write this code? Well, uh, maybe line 35, but if your line numbers don't line up, that doesn't matter. Just find your part where you added your comment. This is where that is. So start points code. Set the starting points equal to. When a game starts, usually how many points do you start with? Zero. There we go. So we're going to set our starting point to zero. VAR, we're creating a new variable, a new object, a new container. Current score. It's a number equal to zero. So the human readable language is set the starting points equal to zero. The code in ActionScript is var keyword to create a variable. The name of the variable, whatever we want, current score, colon number. This variable can only hold data of type number. And we equal, we assign it a value of 0. That's a 0, not an O. You get a big problem, of course, if you put an O there, even a capital O, because an O is not a 0. 0 is a 0. Now, even though I've been programming for years, I seem to have a bad habit of forgetting right away what I name my things. So points, we called it wave one points. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy that so that the computer can remember it at least. And the next line we've got wave one points underscore text dot text is equal to a string. Now we're going to say, let's display that those points on the screen. On the screen, we have a box. I'm going to set the text property to some word that looks familiar. Quote, points, colon, space, plus current score. So now we have a mechanism, now we have code that will display whatever the current score is, currently zero, in this text box with this message. If we don't write the text, you saw that it replaces whatever is in the box with whatever our code says. So if we don't put, again, the word points, It'll just show a number over there as you're tapping on your sprites, which might not be bad. I've got a, I'm just saying I'm a little amateur because if you wanted it to say the word points, you also have to display it here in the in the string command. If you save it and run it, you will only see it showing zero. It will not work yet to, to tap the sprites. But go ahead and save it and run it. It's a good idea to run your code every once in a while. Uh, you want to figure out the errors before you get too far into it. So save it and run it. Hopefully no errors. If you do have errors, we'll fix them. But all that you'll see on screen is it'll say point zero, And it won't change if you tap your, your sprites yet.
Let me confirm mine. So all that it'll say is a points zero. So we go from the SC welcome to play. I see my timer running down. That still works great. I see point zero. If I tap on the guy, nothing happens yet. But I see point zero. If it doesn't say point zero, if it still only says points, something didn't quite work with your code. But it should say points zero. We're not going to make it do it just yet, but these little sprites will be running around the screen. They're just not going to stay in one place while you tap them. They're going to run around. Uh, we're not going to fully do that just yet, but we have um, a timer that takes, in my case, 10 seconds for wave one. I want to then, on screen, show that character for 10 seconds my code has 10 seconds, I want 10 seconds of movement of it running around. So we need to go over to whatever frame number 10 seconds is and add uh, frames to 10 seconds. So let's see, that's going to be 240. So in all of your layers, up to 240 frames, which is 10 seconds. Select all four, then press F5 so that we get frames all the way to there. So on all of your layers, F5 all the way to 10 seconds. If you go back to your first, if you go back to your first frame, that sprite that we drew a while ago, it's still a completely basic drawing. We need to convert this into a movie clip so that then we can animate it moving around. We can animate it so that its mouth opens and closes. We can then write code so that when you tap that movie clip, you get points. So this, uh, this graphic that you drew, go ahead and select it and press F8. We'll turn it into a symbol. Call it MC underscore uh, ghost blue. Maybe I have a blue ghost, maybe a red ghost, yellow ghost. You know, if you're using different sorts of sprites, call it whatever you want. But MC something, the name of your sprite. And then an instance name, ghost blue one underscore MC. Now the reason I'm calling this this thing because I know eventually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have different ghosts flying around. I'm gonna have maybe three blue ghosts that give you points, maybe two red ghosts that take away points. So each one of them needs its own instance name. And what makes sense to me, which then I forget 10 seconds later, is ghost blue one MC. This is a ghost, one of my sprites. Maybe I have a ghost sprite, maybe I have a demon sprite, maybe I have a, you know, spirit sprite. So ghost blue, it's one of the blue ghosts in my design, because I'll have a red ghost and a yellow ghost, etc. 
and it's the first one. So if I've got three blue ghosts, then now I can name them Ghost Blue 1, Ghost Blue 2, etc. And these are based on movie clips. So this is the part where the, these names can be anything you want. And if you're doing something different than mine, that's totally fine. You just have to keep track of what you called your things. That's why as soon as I type it, I'm also going to copy it so I can paste it in a moment. So now that has an instance name so that when I tap on it, I can start to set it up to get points. We'll go to frame two of the actions layer. Right click, insert blank keyframe, which is F7. So on frame two of the actions layer, insert a blank keyframe. We've got our first keyframe of actions, which, which sets up the basic things. Our first action, our first frame for actions is setting up our timer and that we have zero points. But then on our second frame is where we're going to start to set up the code for um, getting points. And this is because we're going to loop our waves. We're going to have things running around and then loop more than once. So when we create this loop, we will see this in a moment, when we create the loop, we don't want it to loop back to frame one where we reset everything. We defined everything on our basic starting points. Eventually when we loop, we're going to loop back to frame two where we don't restart our whole score and stuff. So on frame two, actions. We'll just make a note here. Note, when we loop, we jump back to frame two as to not reset or restart our basic variables, which is timer and score. So that doesn't fully make sense right now at the moment. That's OK. Once we add a little bit more code, it'll make more sense. But we, we are adding our code here. This is where we set event listeners for clicking and getting points. So not back on frame one, but on frame two is where we set it up. This is where we're going to get points. Next line, ghost blue one mc dot add event listener. All right, previously we had the button to play the game or get help. And there was an event listener. There was some object on the screen. Click on the help button to go to the help screen. Well, now we're going to have these sprites. Click on these things, get points. So for it to keep track of clicking on things, um, we've got another event listener. And this will be similar to what we've done before. We previously used the built-in uh, code snippet, but we'll write it, we'll write it ourselves this time. Uh, touch with a capital T, touch event dot in all caps, touch underscore tap comma, fn hit ghost blue one. 
We've got one ghost running around on the screen. Ghost blue one MC. Whenever we click that ghost, I want it to do a certain thing. Maybe give me two points, maybe play a certain sound. So we're saying after we tap, that particular ghost run this function. And we're inventing the function ourselves. This is a function that when we hit the ghost, specifically the blue, number one. So that's a number one, not, not blue L, blue one, right? Because we've got over here ghost blue one. Next line, function, okay, we need to define what it means. We're inventing this command after we tap that ghost, run this command. This command doesn't exist, we have to define it. The same right here, there's a function, there's a command called whatever, parentheses, colon, void, and then we define all of the steps of what this function is doing. This is very, very similar to what we did on previous days when we made those buttons work to go to help or play. This is the part that sometimes people forgot here. In the parentheses event, colon, touch event. So right here, in these parentheses, it was easy to forget this. I might have written it too fast the other times, but don't forget this part. Uh, I didn't write it first. I like to write the whole basic command and then fill in the details. So I have put the parentheses, but not what's inside yet. And once I've got the basic command, then I put in specifically, this is an event about touch event when you tap on it, colon void. That's a colon, not a semicolon. Semicolon is only at the end of the line. That's the dot, comma, semicolon. That's a double dot, colon. And then, as before, I'll break apart those curly braces. I'll make a note, end of that function. So now we've written some code, we've defined this function that explains when you tap on ghost blue number one, I have a function, I have a basic structure to do stuff. The stuff that I'm going to do is uh, my current score so current score is what's keeping track of the current score and it was first set to zero on the previous frame well then now in this function plus plus semicolon so we're saying here add one to the current score so we take whatever the current score is this variable this object currently holds zero, the number zero. On the previous frame, we said current score equals zero. Okay, makes sense. The game just started, we have zero points. But now, every time we touch ghost one, we're taking whatever current score is in plus plus, which is just their command to, to be, to give it a one more. Zero is really advanced, you're in college. Zero plus one is what? One. Okay, so then current score becomes 1. 1 plus plus becomes 2. You got 2 points. Eventually we have 2 points. We tap it again. 2 plus plus, 3. So that's what that's doing right there. Add 1 to the current score, which is currently 0. So plus plus just adds 1. Now we have other ways to add it. Add 2 points or minus points or random points. We'll get to that. We'll just do simple plus points at the moment. And to confirm that, we'll have a trace command so that in the in the debug panel, first we'll do it in the debug panel and then on screen. First in the debug panel, we will confirm that we are getting points. So we will say here, trace points are plus current score. 
current score is the variable, is the container that has our current points. And every time we tap, we add a point. And then in the debug, say a message, points are, your points are, whatever that is, should be one. And if I tap the ghost a few more times, it keeps adding one in it. And on the trace, on the debug panel, it keeps getting, giving you, showing you one more point. If we can confirm that works, then we will make it display on the screen in a moment. And then we'll get fancy with random points, minus points, hit points, all that good stuff. Save it and run it. And let's try that for a moment. Tap the ghost. And in your debug panel, not on screen yet, but on your debug panel, you should see your points increasing. So debug that. Question? Okay, I'll be there one moment. Let me just check my code works. I'll be there one moment. So possible errors might be the names of your instance uh, instances. So um, let me just confirm mine here. So I'll go here. No errors there. Okay, I'll press play. There's a thing on the screen. I tap it a few times. Down at the bottom there, I'm getting um, some points. Uh, actually, I'm not. Oh, I know why. Forgot to do one thing here. Um, okay, yes, one thing here. Let's debug this. Forgot to do one thing. The um, All of this code here exists on frame 2. Well, back on frame 1 of this layer, of this scene I mean, we said stop. There's no way to proceed past frame 1. A moment ago we needed that, we needed to stop right here so that it doesn't automatically loop throughout my whole game, but now that stop command is in my way, because literally it says, when you go from welcome to wave one, stop, run this code, and then there's no more continuation to the next frame where the actual tap stuff happens. So this was just there, that stop command there is, is a temporary, let's comment it out. So I, I forgot about that. Uh, so comment out that stop. Uh, you can make a comment here. Uh, just a test so that game doesn't loop weirdly. That's just an optional thing. Uh, but now that stop isn't helping us because we do want it to proceed through those 240 frames where we're eventually going to animate it. Plus. The, po the code to keep track of points starts on frame 2. If we had a stop there, we never got to frame 2. That code never loaded into memory, never did anything. So we'll turn off our stop on frame 1 of your wave 1. Not welcome or help. So we'll save that. Let me check one mine one more time. Check what mine one more time, then I'll confirm yours works. But let me load it again. All right, that's coming up. Click OK on that. I go to play. The time is running out. I tap on the, on the little thing over here. Let's set up one more thing here. It didn't didn't quite do it exactly, but I think that's because this is a point where we actually want a little bit more code before we confirm this. Uh, so here's one more thing we need. We need to say also, remember that I was saying about the loop. So when this goes over to frame two, 
Um, at the end, it gets a 240, and then it wants to proceed over to the next scene. We don't want that. We want it to run out of time. So uh, let's go to frame 240 of our actions panel. New blank keyframe. So on our actions panel, frame 240, we need a new insert blank insert blank keyframe. And then our code, go to and play two. Okay, so I forgot about this, the, the loop. We have 240 frames, 10 seconds. And the uh, when it gets to the end, it will want to automatically play then to the next scene, which we don't want that. We want the timer to be keeping track of the moving from scene to scene. So we need to loop back for it to keep looping on its own. We need to go back to frame two, where we have the uh, the start of our wave. So this is on frame 240 of the wave one. Go to and play capital A, capital P, number two, so that it loops back. All right, let me just confirm one more thing, then we will add the code.
Okay, so there was one more thing I forgot here. Uh, let's go back to the start of our code. And we will need these two at the top here. I thought I had them in my notes, but I might have missed them. Okay, so here's a couple more things. The reason, um, so I'm trying to tap on the ghost and nothing happens. Well, previously, when we tapped on something, it was the it was the plain old click event for like a classic website click with a mouse. Um, ultimately, this game is going to be on a device, on a tablet, where it's a different kind of a, uh, interaction. It's not a click, it's a tap. So I forgot about this. We needed to add here at the very top here, we activate these couple of features that now we're dealing with touch events, not just click of a mouse, that's basic, that's built in, that's why that previously worked. But now we've got this, it's going to be on a device, a slightly different way of interacting. So let's add these two lines at the very beginning. We need to import space flash dot events dot touch event. This will allow us to now use uh, touch events instead of click with a mouse. Next we've got multi touch dot input mode equals etc. It's just a big long thing, but this is now saying now we have the ability for the action script code to understand where you've tapped on the device. So that's what was missing. If you were if you were not seeing any feedback down at the um, uh, debug panel, it was about that and you see there's a lot of details sometimes. So we needed to activate the um, touch capability. Previously a, a plain old click worked, but a click is limiting because when you're on a when you're on a multi-touch input device, when you're on one of these tablets, you have multi-input, right? You have the ability to, to tap with two fingers or do pinch and zoom like that. You don't have that with a mouse. So by activating those two, by writing those two lines, now we're activating more of the capabilities of using multi-touch on a device. So I'll try that again if it didn't seem to work. And let me check mine. The capitalization on that definitely matters. Multi-touch with a capital M. And then multi-touch input capital M I M, but not on the first one. It's weird. Just make sure you type it exactly as I have it there. I actually got that out of the code snippet because I, I was going to forget how to type it. But let me just confirm mine, and then I'll go back to the code one moment. I'm going to play. It's right there. I'm tapping down at the bottom. There we go. I'm getting points down at the bottom. Look at that. I got 20 points. Obviously, it'll be harder when I, when it's running around. Ooh, I got 40 points. Let me pause right there. So it should work like that in that now when you run it and you're tapping your sprite, it should give you feedback right over here. It should tell you that I have started to get some points. Let me pause to make sure yours works, but this is what I missed a moment ago. I forgot to add in this part here at the top. Make sure you add that and then it should work.
So Joseph, it's that it's that line right there at the very end. Like,
Let's do just a little bit more, then we'll get into our lab time. So it seems that a lot of people's code is working, but a couple things are not. So we might have to do a little one-on-one. -on -one. But let's just do a little bit more, then we'll wrap it up. If it was working, that when you were tapping the sprite and it was appearing in the debug panel, well, that the debug panel is trace. We're saying down in the debug panel, show my points. Well, that's not where I want it. I want it to appear up on that box. Well, that box has an instance name and therefore we can write into that box similar to how we had the you know the the the, the points similar to how we had the timer so all that we really need is still inside of that function we need um, to add one more line that says whatever the name of your point box is uh, dot text, set it to a string, set it to a sentence with some phrase plus your current score. Current score is based on how many clicks you've made. So once you click the ghost, increase the points displayed in the trace panel and display it on screen. So it starts at zero, because on the previous frame we set it on zero. But then now when you tap and get points, I want to display it on screen. And that is the same idea about what's the name of the text box, and then dot text, the text property, assign it or set it to a sentence with the phrase points plus the actual variable with the number. So then now we've said it that when you tap the, the sprite, those points should appear on screen. And again, it depends on the size of your box, the size of the font. If something gets cut off, that's going to then be about how are things lined up on screen, what's the size of your font and box, and so forth. But the code itself should be this. And you can try to save and run that and see if it displays now your points on screen. So again, I'll check it on mine first. I will debug that. What I usually do is do this copy and paste. I went back to actions frame one of this layer to go copy. What did I call that box again? So instead of me typing it wrong, I go back to what it was previously typed and then I copy and paste. So now when I play that and I tap the sprite, I am getting points increasing on my screen here. So, so far I've made it up to 20 points. If yours is not doing that just yet, well, well we might need to do a little one-on-one -on -one and back up on your code, especially if you're not getting any errors. But I got some points on screen. 
uh, the very, very final thing that I want to do is it's too easy to get points. This thing is just standing in the middle. I want it to run around. So this is the part where I can add a motion tween. I can add to that layer, sprite one, right click, motion tween. So back on frame one, sprite one, right click, create motion tween. And uh, motion tween is wherever you go, wherever you put your object, on a different frame and move it around, that's where it's going to run around to. So I've got a motion tween on the first frame. The sprite is out of the screen. The person won't know where it's coming from. I moved over some amount of frames. I'm not paying too much attention, but I moved over some amount of frames. We'll put the playhead on frame 10 and then I move the sprite somewhere. So it will automatically animate it going from here to here. And I moved over some more frames, moved it somewhere else. So then it's going to jump down here. It's going to animate automatically motion. And then I, one more, it went out of the screen. Well, I got 10 seconds to work with. So then uh, I'm going to move over and move it down here, and then move it here and here and here, and just start to make it move to different parts of the screen. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So what I mean is I will go over just a moment and then maybe move it down here and then move over here to move it up here. So you just have to go to a new frame and move it somewhere. I'm going to make it really tricky by then backtracking and going back really fast over there. So I have these whole 10 seconds now. This is one sprite. Imagine when we add two or three or whatever more, each one's moving in its own path. So I'm starting to see here in these 10 seconds, this one sprite will start off from the left and it'll move here and then here. You can go back then and start to bend these lines to make it a curve instead of just a straight line. Just grab that line and curve it. And wherever you go over here, you make a new movement. So let's say I want it to appear on a different part of the screen. This is the only part to say, like, think about it like this. If now I want it, after it goes out of the screen at the bottom, now I want it to appear on the top, well, I need to get my sprite up to the top before I can move it down. So I need to, outside of the frame, move it over out here where it's never going to be visible to the user. So I can reposition it somewhere up here. over here. So see that? Let me zoom out some more. I had to outside, you can't quite see it, but outside of my visible area, I put a few frames in here so I can move it out over here, over here, over here. I can start at the top so that the user doesn't know that the next frames will be visible to then zoom down here. So the easiest way with our level of knowledge perhaps is take advantage of all of these frames out here and move it outside of the frame so that then you can start it to appear here and then come in here. So then I'll say I'll move over some amount and it'll move here and then it'll move over here. And then exit. So it's going to move around something like that. I'm just doing a quick play. It's moving all over the place. It's faster here and there. See how I have to go outside of it so it appears up there, and then it goes really slow at the end. Well, to speed it up and slow it down is how fast or how much, how far in between frames do you have? If you've got a lot of movement quickly from here to here to here, well, it's going to move fast on screen because it has to move to these different frames quickly. But then when there's a lot of amount of time between keyframes, it'll move slower because it doesn't have to move that fast. And as I said, I can grab these lines and curve them. Maybe I want it to do a little curve instead of a straight line. Maybe this corner I want it to change over here. So this original path that I drew, I can still further refine it. Just grabbing the corners, grabbing the edges, dragging it around, 
Or also, I think you can use the pen tool, I think. And so that's running around to some sort of pattern. And when I debug that, now I've got this sprite that's a little bit more tricky, not just standing in the middle of the screen. It's going to run around. Points should be appearing on screen. And uh, next time we'll, we'll add like uh, minus points, random points. We'll add the boss with hit points. We'll add music. Let's see here. So I'm going to play. Here it is running around. I can't catch it. There it goes. It goes over here. Where is it coming from? There it is. Ooh, this time it's trickier. I've only gotten up to 16 points this time. And then it gets to the boss. So we've got um, movement. And eventually the boss will do its own thing. We'll do that next time. But now we've got this sprite running around. It gets points. And then we have still game over and so forth. So just as a show of hands, raise your hand. How many of you worked? How many of yours worked like mine? OK, a couple people there. Good. If it didn't, we, we can figure that out in a moment. So I'll end the lecture at this point. We'll have some lab time until 4. I'm going to put my code, my latest version of the code, into the folder, just in case you want to see that. We'll do some help. And then when we come back on Wednesday, we'll keep, we'll keep going.